uh, if you would like to see the the room, so to speak, um, you're going to need to look at us, look at the live uh, at the live stream, because I okay. can't turn my laptop um, to show you the rest of the people. Yeah, that's fine. I, yeah, I have the stream open here in the screen, so if you can. Um, Marcy, this morning we already had a bit of an introduction to, to the Graphathon. We uh, explained a bit the, um, you know, the idea of having a... Uh, um, the, the, uh, the basic idea, a bit of the history, but we'd really, really love to just hear from, from your words. Um, just say who you are and how you got into doing Graphathons and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm Matsi from Finland, uh, so I was the main organizer of, I guess, the last Graphathon that happened, so that was in 2019, I think, yes. Um, so I got into this thing in uh, 2016 exactly through a Graphathon event, so I just saw an advertisement in our university campus. And then I thought, hey, that sounds cool. And then I w went there with my friend and we had a good time. We ro made a nice demo and really enjoyed it. And then kind of, I think the next year I did not participate, but then in 2018 I joined again because it was so fun. And then in 2019 I was one of the organizing people. So basically that's my that's my uh, background. So, and uh, what, 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 would you, what would you say, just in your words, um, kind of, what, what's the point of a graphathon? Why would people come up, to, show up to one, and why, why is it fun to organize? Uh, well, so for, from the participants' view, I guess it's it's nice. You learn a lot of things and you get to do uh, a lot of things so at least for me it was like i get to try so i was not okay i knew a little bit of programming when i when i did it the first time but i had no idea about graphics programming so i learned a lot about graphics and then you also get to really do fun stuff like in like like kind of this scheduling or kind of directing a demo is is really nice uh Thing which is kind of completely separate from the programming, and also uh, for this, uh, for my productions, we uh, I did the music also, so I kind of got to express myself. Um, and from the organizing point of view, I think it's really nice to to I don't know to see other people when they when they learn and then they kind of find the joy in in these kind of graphics. And really, in our events, we really have like people from many skill levels, like complete beginners, and also like pros who have been doing this for ten years or more, and like all of them were having fun. I think finding the joy in in, in graphics and art sounds like a, a really good motivation. And um, so, what what we we were quite fascinated with the way the graphathon opens the door for newbies to involve students and uh, you know people who are new to computer programming, computer graphics into the demo scene. Would you say that your events have been successful in, in encouraging people to, 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 to learn some new skills and, and uh, feel welcome? Yes, I would say so. So really we had like really nice productions even from people who had never done before. And I, yeah, I don't know how many kind of <laughs> got into the demo scene, but Lost you. Hopefully, we'll get you back. All right. Connection with Finland has unfortunately. So that's broken. for sure. Ah, ah, and you're back. Sorry, Marcy. You were you you disappeared for a few seconds. Okay. And, okay. Uh, you need to turn your video back on because it was. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I stopped the camera. Mm -hmm. Now I'm turning it back on. Okay. Can you see me? Uh, not, not yet. Um, okay, I think I'll refresh, rejoin the. I'll do the same. 
Do you guys have any questions for, for Marcy? <laughs> questions for Finland. <laughs> How's the weather? <laughs> Hello? Hey, you're back. Awesome. Yes. Actually, if... If you can stop sharing your video, it might help. Yeah. If it's possible. Yep, I will do that. So, um, Marcy, if people have a question for you, a very important question, I think. Uh, they would like to know what the weather is like in Finland right now. Right now, it's extremely hot. It's like being for two, two weeks, it's been like absolute madness. Well, you should you should come to Bern. It's, we've just had a massive cool down. It's it's been raining, and uh, people have probably been wearing sweaters and jackets on their way here. Any okay. other uh, questions on the top of your minds, people? With which tools did you write your first demo? Did you hear that? Yes. Yeah. So I used processing. So that's what we suggest to the beginners in our graphathon. I don't know, is that what you are going to use or something else? I, I didn't get that. So he, he said that uh, he was suggest processing for beginners and that's what, and so the, we, we actually, uh, that's, that's our plan now to show a couple of uh, demo tools and um, uh, I'm going to switch now to, um, to the camera so people can um, People on the live stream can, can follow us a bit as well. And um, Marcy, if, uh, I'm going to try to share my screen if it works. Otherwise, yeah, I just use the stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, us to the stream is a better idea. Okay, so thank you. Super. Some corrections from the stream. So um, for the for the graphathon, we've set up a platform like we mentioned. This is the Make Echtzeit Kultur uh, event. Um, we we decided to to kind of uh, use the same platform we've been using already for a couple of years. Um, to host uh, the um, the demo nights, so we had uh, already once in 2021 um, an event where we had uh, just one effect tools and um, a couple of entries. And uh, this is also a platform that we use for a lot of hackathons in Switzerland. And basically, um, here uh, uh, the four challenges are a little bit distributed along the different tools that we suggest. Um, and so I'll, I'll probably start with with processing, as it was just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So this is um, in, in this challenge, which just takes a second to load. You have a, a game of life running directly in your browser. So this is like a, this is kind of like an interactive uh, algorithm. Uh, when I click here, I this is a very famous kind of very, but very simple algorithm that looks really interesting, even though it's it's simple. And this um, the co the code for this you can see when you when you click um, just the button here. And this uh, basically this. Uh, Challenge comes from Robin Baumgartner, who is a game maker in Berlin, and uh, you can you can this uh, the sketch that is running here is is on some on a platform called Open Processing, which just makes it really easy to to start writing your your first processing project. So you just like create a sketch here on the top right on the Open Processing website, and then here you're you're directly starting to code uh, and. The processing language was designed really to make uh, graphics programming as accessible as possible. Um, and the, I don't know, Jörg, if, you, if, we, if we have kind of a curriculum that we would recommend here. Um, but basically, it, it comes with uh, a, a lot of uh, tutorials um, that, that, uh, and, and books and, and thousands of examples. Um, but it does require like being able to obviously write code um, and and uh, it's, it's you know it's it's a real programming language that is really used to make uh, exciting digital artworks. Mm -hmm. We we have some some books on the topic and some examples which are good to good to start off. Mm -hmm. And um, um, in in our workshops we often use like the the P5 GS editor, 
which is this, which is at editor.p5js.org, which is exactly the same as um, as you saw with open processing, which is is uh, kind of uh, another platform for hosting mm -hmm. code. And so here's the same the same project uh, in in p5js that uh, Jörg just mentioned. And you have uh, the setup function, which is basically what happens when you when you begin a new project, and you have a create canvas command, which creates a window of a particular size in pixels. You can just set variables in a simple way, uh, like w equals 20. That sets a value of 20 for that variable at the beginning of the program, and then you can do calculations um, and and have loops and this kind of thing. For people who have have worked with JavaScript or Java or C or anything like this, this is really lo probably looks like a piece of cake. But obviously for someone who's just starting, this is going to be tricky. But this is kind of considered to be really like already a good level to aspire to. Um, and uh, processing has been around for a lot of years. It's it's part of curriculum in schools and and, all, and, and like York said, there's a lot of, lot of ways to, to learn it. So tutorials, examples and books um, are, are available from the proce official processing website. So we, we do have qu um, quite a few children here in the audience. Um, I don't know if I can, I think I have their parental permission to show them quickly on the live stream. <laughs> <They're> yeah. <laughs> our kids uh, here are maybe ages six to tw 10 or 11, I would say. And um, processing is, is, is probably a too, too high level for them. So for, 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 or for people who have never program for if, you, if someone is really daunted by this and thinks oh my gosh this is a bit too too hard for me um, what our recommendation is to use snap and this you will find on our platform if you if you go to the acceleration that we mentioned this in the in the, at the beginning in the morning that we have uh, this Moodle course but maybe maybe we if anybody wants to just have the the link directly it is snap dot berkeley dot edu so it's a project from from the uh, Berkeley University, and you you don't even need to like uh, create an account. You can just run Snap now, and so this uh, this is m kind of like a visual environment to develop uh, demos. Most of you might know S Scratch with the Scratch Cat, which is used uh, most commonly in schools, and um, Snap is somewhat special because it's it's like a supercharged Scratch, which um, supports different um, theoretical um, computer science models which make it great like if you want to do work with recursion and um, have some different data types and want to mix everything up and um, it's it, it's as simple as scratch but more powerful and on the on the Moodle course which you saw there are some some great um, beginner's uh, entry on how to make your first generative uh, art pictures which work mostly like on using some random functions and it's at the beginning more or less than than like a like a picture which which you create but you c can also do animations with it and this is recommended like for 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 understanding like how how does an algorithm work so if you if you try out different different um, different examples which which are in the which are in the Moodle course, you can easily try out um, what it does and find out what it makes. And it's 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 really a good uh, thing to start off um, to to do your first visual stuff in. Um, and it's it also available in many languages, so you can easily switch to German or, or any other language, which is, I think, a very important point. So, so and, and for, for the people we, we are who are um, at this place, we, we, we take our time and, and find out with you which, which is the right thing to, to, to start off and, and to, 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 do some, to do some pixel art. <laughs> And um, this is called Snap. Yeah. Um, so yes, S Scratch, just pulling up the website. Um, 
has has uh, not a lot, but I mean, there's definitely like a demo scene. Oh, yeah. There's a bit of a demo scene presence on Scratch as well. If you look very, around, very very small. Yeah. But uh, at, at at the game ja uh, at the game jam at Playburn, our festival in two weeks, um, we're going to be have the um, the the nominees of the children's game prize, and you're going to see a lot of Scratch projects because the Scratch is being taught in schools by professional game designers in Bern, um, and the kids' works are going to be exhibited uh, at Playburn in two weeks. So then I want to maybe just introduce quickly to other projects um, that are a bit more new um, and probably most people have not heard of them. So this is, uh, I want to show you quickly Astro Fox, which I think one of you here has heard of you already, but uh, it's kind of been trending on GitHub uh, the past uh, couple of months. Uh, it's basically just a desktop tool that you can download for Mac, Windows or Linux. I have it, I have a Linux machine, so I'm just gonna, just give me one second to start it up. So As Astro Fox uh, is is basically a tool to bring uh, the pr the lights and sounds uh, into really everyday hands. So I'm just going to take a piece of music um, and uh, th just off my hard drive, and you can see it immediately starts playing when I load the music file. Um, I can put the music on repeat. I'm just going to make the volume a little bit lower, and you can see here at the bottom there's like the waveform, right? And here at the top, I have a basic scene. So if I, I, can, I have some, some defaults here, I can delete them. Um, but uh, the idea is basically you just add um, uh, bits of animation to that re respond in real time to the, to the music, right? So it could be like a piece of text. So let's say, hello, graphathon, right? So I've made a piece of text, I can change its size. And then um, I can make it re react to the music just by clicking the lightning arrows here. So for example, if I click rotation, then it starts bouncing along to the beat. Same thing with the opacity. Um, and then uh, press X to, to undo that. And then you can also add like a, an image. Uh, so you can have multiple scenes. And uh, let me just uh, I'll add an image here from my computer. Hopefully, I have uh, some alpaca or something that I can show you. And so, when I show that image, you can just see it here in the background. Um, and uh, not sure why my text disappeared, but um, basically the same thing with images. Uh, I can also um, make the opacity of the image depend on the music. So here's my image now flickering here, along to the beat. Um, then you have like uh, some some more th kind of demo scene like stuff, like you can add a bit of geometry. These things are always more fun when you can have boxes, right? Or toruses or dodecahedrons or whatever. And um, yeah, and you can basically just play with it. I mean, it's it's uh, it's really cool. Um, yep. There, so, mm -hmm. The question was if there's a timeline, if you can really change things. No, it's really just to kind of to practice. It's kind of like a, maybe if you think about it like a VGA tool. So you have like a band performing on stage and then you would use this to make something cool happen uh, behind the scenes. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And but but um, in fact, uh, if you if you look here, if you click developer tools, you see that it's actually just a plain web browser, right? Running uh, a web application. There's no, there's no real like uh, voodoo magic behind it. Um, and uh, everything that you uh, that you see happening here on the stage, um, you can s you can save and and export and actually incorporate into a demo production. So you you can just uh, you think about it as like a s a, scr a, a sandbox or scratch pad for for your ideas. And it has, it, I mean, it really gets, gets interesting when you do um, like add, add things like effects. I can add a kaleidoscope. So you can export it and then have some code? Yeah, exactly.
not sure actually how to make it bigger, but I think you guys get the idea, right? But you can record a video. And of course you can record a video. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you do it like real time, real time switching on off mm -hmm. and preparing. One could, one could also make some, some small demo with it by recording a video, I guess. I, it's the first time I see it, but this would, could be an idea. I think it's definitely uh, uh, it's 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 a tool that is uh, worthy of having a look at if you've never done any kind of programming and you just want to play around with demo-like stuff. This would be my recommendation. That's free to download from astrofox.io. And um, Marcy, you're still with us. If you have any anything to add or any questions, just shout. Right, I think we still hear you. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I have much at this point. And I might need to leave soon. Okay. But I'm really glad that you are organizing this and I'm happy to see that you have. I don't think so bad. Well, and hopefully they will learn and enjoy. Super. Thank you, Marcy. So you, there's a, a you, you will, you'll be available during the weekend if we if we have reach out. We have any questions for you? We can just uh, ping you on Telegram. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Super. Thank you so much for, for joining and, and making the connection and encouraging us to, to do this graphathon. And uh, look forward to some results. 3, 3 p.m. your time, 2 p.m. our time, we'll start presentations on this stream tomorrow. Okay. And yeah, I'm say hi to everyone in Finland from us. <laughs> okay, guys, let's wave to Marcy. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> So, um, the, um, the last, the last tool that I wanted to quickly show you is the, is the one that you saw right at the beginning of our event. Um, the, the video that, um, the, the demo, uh, guys space agency by circus serenade was made in a tool called cables jail. Um, it's also the, the tool that, uh, was used to make this little invitation to, to the graphathon. Um, and it's uh, like one of the more exciting tools right now, I think, for many people who are coming into the demo scene. Um, this is making a lot of things that were before very difficult to accomplish, a lot more uh, easier to reach. I mean, the thing is, d demos have been made with tools always, right? And in previous years, we would have talked to you about something like Notch, a demo scene t uh, tool or tool, uh, I think it's .io. Uh, there's, there's basically, yeah, there's basically a lot of, a lot of programs like the AstroFox for doing real-time, real-time creative uh, graphics projects. Um, and the difference is that unlike AstroFox or Notch, Cables runs completely in the browser. So the demo that I showed you before, um, it's, it's, it runs just in a web page, which you can obviously make full screen, right? Talking about this one here with the poetry. You guys still remember, right? And you can actually just take, uh, like in the spirit of the web, where every web page you can like right click and view the source and see how it works. Um, every um, cables project can just be instantly opened in the editor, which looks like this. Just don't be a f like, don't be freak out because this is a qu quite a sophisticated production. Uh, yeah, this is this is too complicated. So this is like a, a a big demo project that took weeks or maybe even months to make. Um, let me see if I can show you this one. All right, so Cables basically just has three areas. The editor has this main kind of node editing pane. It has a little preview here. So this is what the demo kind of looks like. And, and this is the properties view in the bottom right. Um, most, most of your work will happen in between, between these, these two areas. So basically when I, when I click on any box here, um, I can change this property. So for example, if I wanted to change this text to high burn, I can just do that and I instantly see the results on the screen. Right, um, and these these nodes um, are connected to each other. The the order matters. Um, for example, the sequence is about if you think about like layers, you know I can change the the sequence of the 
of the th uh, uh, the the order of these uh, of these animations to make them um, appear above or below each other, right? Um, and I basically I, I make my demo by make adding little boxes and drawing it around. So it's 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 in 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 basic the basic idea is that like you start by just adding a node and usually you start with a um, with a main loop, which I've already added. I can't add twice, um, but like the main loop is where the frames are really created. Um, and then you, you once you have a main loop, you can you can attach something to it. So maybe if I just move it over here, I can I can attach like a, a box to it. Well, not a box, a cube. Right, and immediately I have something happening here. Um, uh, and then if I if I change any of these, the the cube changes its properties, and that is reflected in the main loop. Right. Um, of course, the geometry just on its own is not really interesting. Probably quite quickly, I'd want to add some, some, some textures to it, or maybe let's change its positions. So I can just click somewhere along the line here, between connecting the main loop and the cube, and I can add, for example, another parameter like transform, which is used to, in, um, to change the position and rotation and scale of objects. And you see how quite conveniently, I can actually move the cube around just by dragging in here. Um, I can change its rotation by just dragging in here, or I can just click and, uh, and say like 45 degrees. Just, but we still can't really see that it's a cube because there's no shading, right? So, uh, well, there's shading, but there's a, there's a, just a kind of a, a boring material. So let's uh, let's let's add a material to it. Um, and there's lots and lots of different materials. This is where it gets really interesting. Right, so I'm just going to add a simple material called Lambert, Lambert material, to the cube, um, and this allows me to give it like a bit of color. Yeah, um, and if you if you want to break uh, the sequence, you can you can just shake and that comes out and yeah. So wait a second, uh, like that. That's it. So here, like you see, the order matters. If I put the Lambert material underneath the cube, it's not going to work. But now it's nice and shaded, so that's that's how the cube works. What are the no. Well, this basically, like, if you, if you think about it, every one of these is is uh, like a a code, a programmed object, right? So at any at any point, I can just click code, and I can view the code for a cube, right? Um, so here here's what what creates a cube. And the, po the, the lines are basically connecting this, this code together. So it's behind the scenes, it's just passing the, the, the reference of the cube to the material, which so adding material to the cube, and that, and that in, together becomes transformed in space, and that together gets added to the scene. Yeah, oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, thank you. Mm. Um, I was more interested in the different points, the connectors, so the cube has... I ah. Uh, I see, I see, I see. Yes, of course. So the connectors there are actually the variables. So whenever I see, like here, the, the width, right? Um, that corresponds to, you see it glowing? That's this one here. Exactly. You see, I can see the numbers here, and I can pull it out. And now I can, uh, I can actually just uh, create a number um, node, for example. And then I can control the width from, from, a di from outside of the node. See, see? Um, or I can uh, connect it to other things. So, for example, if I um, use a sine wave, <laughs> so now it's getting interesting, right? And the timer, my cube starts bouncing, like going backwards and forwards like that. So basically, the timer just uh, sh shows what 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 is the time? How how long has my program been running? That goes into a sine loop because it, well, without the sine loop. It's just going to keep growing forever, right? It's just going to be a, an infinite cube. And the, the mathematical sine function is just quite handy too. You know, um, yeah. And so basically, yeah, that's how you start coding with visually with, with Cables GL. Um, I'm happy to keep instructing and showing you guys what I know. I, am, I consider myself still quite a beginner. We have uh, Psycon on our team uh, at, at Echtzeit, who is working on a project called Pingala. Yeah, what does Pingala stand for again? It's like um, an Indian 
it's, it's like an Indian philosopher which which shows like numbers are poetry and this is uh, where the name Pingala comes from and so Pingala is 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 the idea to to create some some community in Switzerland and in in different countries to to start off um, with generative creation um, and we we try to, to to bring it to schools to to be able to make workshops mm. be it with with uh, with snap or be it with processing to to show like programming can be can be visually done and so the idea is to to have a, um, a community starting and one part of it is like as we as we heard earlier like the the playburn festival the graphathon or different different um, starting points to to get someone who's interested into the the the, the scene to to make some motion graphics generative art or um, yep, just just to learn and to, to find some some peer group to to share and to to learn from so basically uh, you can you can find us uh, on the on discord mostly we have we also have a pingala channel on slack um, uh, and and on our and on on but it's closed for some reason but uh, th there's an open channel on discord and that's mostly where we hang out so we've been having meetings directly in discord um, where uh, we would practice uh, our cable skills um, and and share like our, our little creations with each other um, and uh, it's quite nice and you're all welcome to join us we don't really have a schedule yet but definitely at Playburn Psycon is going to be there uh, Shana probably too and we're in the run-up to Mountain Bites our big event in February we're definitely going to plan in some more practice workshops with cables but yeah I mean to get started um, you can really like just uh, open up cables.gl uh, just like with the other tools they're showing you, uh, you, you need to have a cre create an account quickly, but it's free and you don't need a credit card or anything. And then you can just uh, create a patch here and you can start with a template or with an empty project. And there's uh, uh, some, some really good documentation and lots of video tutorials on the website. So yeah, that's basically uh, it as far as tools. Does, does any, do any of you want to share another tool that you're, you'd like to use for the graphathon? I mean, maybe some of you have noticed that we have a retro computer uh, at, at currently shut down, but hopefully we'll get it. It's still in the bag there. We have an Amiga in the room. And uh, for that, we have also the Retro Foo challenge, um, where like I explain a bit how Retro computing works with a, with a live uh, emulated demo that you can see directly in your browser. Um, and the, actually, uh, Oliver Stucki, uh, I think is his name, uh, he's, uh, he's one of the Playburn people. He's been doing workshops in QB64, which is a really like old school uh, way of making, of doing programming. It's how I learned programming when I was their age uh, in, the, in the 90s. Uh, and it's but it, but QB64 is like a modern version that runs on today's computers, but the code is still compatible, so you can you can run it on on retro hardware, uh, you know, develop it conveniently on your modern MacBook, but then move it across to to a Commodore. Um, and then there's like these uh, these fantasy consoles that are also really popular, like uh, Tic80, um, which just also like they run in your browser, but like they really replicate the way the kind of the the style and the, the thinking that goes into retro productions where you're obviously like limited by the amount of memory you have and your screen is only 300 pixels wide and you don't have the processor to keep to, to, to do all these fancy 3d graphics necessarily right but it, you can you can make really really beautiful things I think the retro scene in in fact is, is is what makes the demo scene so vibrant you know because you have this tolerance towards people who are coming in with like really old computers or really weird computers you know and and making beautiful things with them um, so like that's the Amiga, the Atari, the ZX Spectrum, many game consoles. So like being at Erupt and having Nintendos and Playstations, you know, make me think that people still make games for Super, uh, games and demos for Super Nintendo, for Sega, 
uh, whatever you know these these old game consoles which are still if you manage to keep yours working it's quite exciting like you know very nostalgic feeling to make something of your own on one of these old consoles so definitely encourage you to try um some, some try check out some of these links basically uh you know you can like if you want to make a dos demo you can use dos box to emulate uh, a, a dos on your computer or a compiler like ub64 oops um would 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 just compile the code here but yeah again i'm not really like um um yeah that's that's basically and th just want i just want to show you the the last one the montezuma's mask this uh, this is a challenge that comes from uh darian who is at open data ch and they are they run um, a lot of hackathons um around the country and they're planning to do one that you probably would all be quite interested in called the glam hack um, which uh, will be in Ticino in November. And Glamhack, uh, it brings people from like museums and cultural institutions together, right? So they you typically take some data sets like from art collections and things. Anyway, Darian suggested that we, we uh, inspire ourselves by the story of Montezuma's mask, or actually uh, more correctly Montezuma's headdress, which was like an artifact that was, uh, you know, carted out 200 years ago from Mexico and is currently in, a, in the Staatsmuseum in Vienna in, in Austria. And it's like the, the source of a lot of demo, di diplomatic conflict between Mexico and Austria because they, they obviously don't want to give the, this headdress back. Um, but like uh, this is like a, this is part of that uh, installation there. And, and basically like uh, it's just a 3D model. It's a 3D model that is uh, on, on a Creative Commons license terms. So anyone can download it for free, use it in any way. And Darian's challenge is that we try to use something like this to, um, uh, to, 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 to make a production. So, I mean, literally, you can just download this, and open it up in, in, in cables or in Snap or any of these tools that we've been showing you and, and use it as a starting point for your demo. Um, the actual headdress, the, the, we, can, we could not find any, like, freely licensed uh, source for it. There's a lot of photographs and things on the internet. Uh, someone made, like, a really fun uh, kind of pixel model of it, like a voxel version. With, with like a little animation here. Mm -hmm. So that's a uh, pixel Montezuma. Anyway, just imagine doing something like this as your demo uh, would, be, would be quite fun. Um, and uh, Darian, he, she mentioned that like this museum in Poland recently uh, uploaded 1000 3D models, uh, which you can all download. This is a museum in Poland. And, and, the, and basically the internet is full of really cool real world objects that have been scanned in. Um, you were talking about maps. Uh, like I, I was playing yesterday with really detailed uh, LiDAR scans of coastal towns that are about to be eroded because of climate change. So people are doing like really high resolution scans of all these houses and buildings up in the Arctic and uploading them um, before literally they go under the sea. So, you know, it would, for, again, if you think about the kind of message you might, you might make by taking like a real, real world story of a political issue a diplomatic conflict or climate change you know download the 3d models use them in your prod uh, you'd get bonus points from daria and, and team and obviously be able to come to glam hack and, and and share something there too so that's that's the uh, montezuma's mask challenge um and i know that like in the in the break we, be, we were talking and, in, and you were mentioning some ideas so i'm wondering if any of you have managed to sketch something you'd like to like to just share with us now uh, and and in interest any others and if you if you like want to collaborate with each other should we make some teams and it would be quite cool to help each other out with some art or some coding during this event so what do you think about that we can also do that over lunch which might be quite quite a good social occasion to get together yeah any other comments or questions is this helpful привет ваня Ukraine represent. <laughs> hey, Vanya uh, helped to set up last night, and he's actually a musical, very talented musician, um, and uh, has uh, video projects online. And very happy to have you here. And I, I might need to help with translation a little bit because he uh, he's from the Ukraine, and we will also have some other people from the Ukraine joining us this weekend. But yeah. Any other things I should mention? Okay, so who's, who's hungry? Who's hungry for pixels? Who's hungry for carbohydrates?
<laughs> I, I, I have a sketch, I could share my sketch. I, was, uh, I couldn't really sleep last night, so I was already thinking about what to work on. I forgot it at home, but luckily I took a picture at like 3 in the morning. This is uh, from... I was thinking of one of my favorite music videos uh, from William Barber. Okay, this is like really old school, it's like 20, 25 years old. But there's basically this music video which is like where they took a, a piece of Barber's Adagio for strings, it's just a piece of classical music and the, it, it was like the DJ updated it with synthesizers and beats and it's kind of a cool jazzy groovy techno tune <laughs> and uh, and the music for it video was was basically just this tree it's just like you just see this tree and it goes through the seasons and you see all these like uh, things fade in and out like uh, people like construction workers and uh, and summer comes and winter comes and yeah and I just love that music video for being nothing except this just the story of this tree and it was really inspired me and I thought about it and, and yeah, probably everyone's forgotten this music video, but I still remember it very well, and I thought making a real-time version or something like that would be quite fun. <laughs> Anybody else want to share a poorly drawn sketch? <laughs> Do you have something there in front of you? Yeah, was just, um, I began with drawing a circle, uh, which represents the emptiness of my head. So I was trying to find an idea, but I couldn't. So I drew a thir circle, and then I put two cubes inside the circle, um, which would um, yeah, would extend to outside of the circle. And maybe I could try to do something like this, where you just have a window, a circle window, objects behind, and then it goes up, and then you are in another world or something like this. And uh, Yesterday I played stray. I don't know if you know the computer games where you are a cat. You are just basically a cat in a, in a city, and the the visuals are stunning. And I was inspired by the atmosphere of the of the colors and the trees, you know. So the, the atmosphere, and the, the visuals, were very inspiring. So maybe I could combine something like this with the aesthetics of it. I don't know. It's just I, I, I might have heard about this, but this looks yeah, so cool. Yeah, it's been developed for quite a few years uh -huh. now. Okay, <laughs> all right, I love that. Getting inspired by games. Yeah. Anybody else has a game they've recently played they want to inspire yourselves from? Maybe maybe our youngsters here. Was spielt ihr? Grad? Mind test. So they're, they're playing, they're using Mind test, which is an open source version of Minecraft. Um, sit there, sit there, sit there from the land, right? But I mean, basically, you have like this multiplayer sandbox game, right? What are you playing right now? You're putting things on fire. <laughs> Very good. Continue. <laughs> this little young man is fascinated I'm with fire. I'm Watch this face. You're firing all things. You're setting the world I'm on fire. I'm setting all things on fire. Isn't that great? <laughs> I made some some big bubble. Wow, I love it. Bubble bacon. Yeah. Right? You also I water. made them five on fire. Amazing. Fire. Do you also have and water? And also fly, uh, a lot of insects. A lot of insects. You've burnt a lot of insects. Of fire. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Five packs of these. So, uh, just about fire effects, Q basic fire effect. Like this, I, if if I if I'm really like maybe with enough beer, I will show you one of my yeah something like this. <laughs> I used to make my first demos with Q basic, 30 years ago, and I was their age. They all, I was also setting things on fire. <laughs> 
My first mm -hmm. demo will be with water. Okay. But, uh, but I will water see. is life. <laughs> we will have water. We'll have fire. Yeah. I will see. Oh, maybe this matches your idea with the tree, with the, the seasons and the elements. Mm -hmm. yeah. Combine. Combine them all. We've we've <laughs> talked a lot about visual things. Um, I also just forgot to mention something that cables is very much inspired by um, node-based music composer tools originally. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I think the first version was even not to make art visuals, but was actually to make music. They were mm -hmm. making a clone of Buzz Tracker, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, no, not that Buzz Tracker. I mean, um, I mean, do you guys know like Ableton Live? Okay, that's more like patches. Yeah, Max, exactly, yes. No, this is this is what I'm thinking, right? Yeah. So you like to make, uh, there's really cool these virtual instruments to make music with? Or like pure and data, it's like some open source version. Nice. Pure data. Pure data, pure data. It's great. Right. I have a friend in Berlin who who's doing workshops with with schools like for doing new music like with computers and doing your own making your own instrument on the one hand like hardware and on the other hand like pure data cabling patches i mean this is this is also pr just a patch like programming language right yeah but um do are any of you uh interested in making some music yeah. I have right. an, uh, an additional thing, mm. uh, uh, trackers, if you know trackers, maybe that's also interesting, take samples from uh, whatever you want and make music out of them. Trackers first uh, grade was fast tracker 2, that was widely used, but then uh, there are also uh, some for Windows that are free or that cost some yeah, that's, right. that's interesting for kids, that's yay, I do myself, myself. Every kid wants to be a rock star. There we go. Be a rock star. <laughs> I also want to be a rock star. You also want to be a rock star? Awesome. Yeah, this this was definitely like uh, this very old school demo scene flavor. So the trackers work like uh, basically you're like a sequencer. You're putting notes, so this is like the A or D on the keyboard, the G, right? on different channels. And uh, you, have, you have a bunch of samples, so you can sort of like in a piano or drum room. Usually you have to assign one sample to a channel. So like every time a note here comes, drum plays and so And it's just like a text editor. You're just scrolling up and down and adding in notes, and it's really fun to play with. Milky Tracker is probably the one I'd recommend right now. It's easiest to download and install. So at Milky Tracker is like based on Impulse tracker, and uh, yeah, you can. It, you, it kind of it also shows you like the keyboard underneath, and and you can play around with uh, changing the sample. There's also hardware trackers now, like Dirty Way. Oh my God! Come on. Yeah. I don't know. Dirty tracker. Dirty Way. Dirty Way. But you need to buy some hardware. Or it's a piece of hardware. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, 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 I can't find my phone anymore, but I have this like nice program for making loops on it. Like, do you guys know about loops? It's like lots of apps to record a little bit of sound and then just then it just repeats and goes doom, da doom, da doom, da doom. Then you add another loop, like bam, 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 right? And then you just kind of like play with big, nice, squishy buttons and you're starting to really compose very quickly it's a lot of fun and we could literally just take our phones go to the train stations make some recordings of <coughs> trains squealing and things and make it into music it's really quite good yeah um but i i'm personally going to focus on the graphic stuff and because of that like i'm just going to probably go and steal someone else's music but uh just as a tip um there's obviously on all the demo scene archives like demo zoo Tons of music. Um, oh wait. Uh, 
um, tons of music that has been made for, for by, by seniors which has never seen the light of a demo. You know, it just has to be said. There's a lot of great music out there that deserves to have visuals, <laughs> right? Um, so, yeah, if you just go to prods and you go to the music category. Uh, here, music. Mm -hmm. Music disc? I'm, yeah. Why am I not saying music? Music is not a platform at all, right? Yeah, I guess it would be demo zoo, which makes it easier to find. That's simpler over actually net labels. Yeah, here exactly. So you have music and graphics, right? So here you have people who have uploaded pictures of rocks and stuff, <laughs> um, and then you have music where, yeah, like here's some Commodore 64 music. This maybe is even part of a demo. I don't know. Okay, now you really want to hear this, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the middle, it's just kind of there. <laughs> um, I was I was more thinking than something like this. This is brilliant, but like yeah, someone made like a track here, which you can download apparently off Google.com, Google Drive, some weird format. So yeah, if 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 you manage to find someone who made really cool music and you can actually use it, as in like it's uploaded and not just mentioned, yeah, much easier. I am afraid is to use the world's popular service. What's my call it? Why is my brain so dead? It's like Vimeo, it's like YouTube, it's SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Thank you guys. Thank you for and on SoundCloud you have bazillions of musical things. Um, and in particular you have the ability to look for Creative Commons. Uh, I can't remember how to search. I mean, they have some albums which are specific Creative Commons, but like, there's a way of doing like an advanced search here, and you can basically like find music which the authors have explicitly. Because the problem with the demo scene, people like just yeah, they don't. They often don't tell you if it's really okay for you to use the music or not. They just throw it on the internet, right? If you download something which is like uh, like here, uh, I maybe we need to log in to download. I don't know, but if it's like if it Commons. says Creative Commons, then that's like just an. It it's please use my. Please remix my music, please. The, the other one is like Open Game Art, right? They this is like for for sp like it's for sprites and stuff, but uh, also has lots of um. Um, ha also has lots of music that people have uploaded, kind of for making video games, so like chip tunes and things. Yeah, and they're they're. <laughs> they have a big warning about NFTs and stuff, but you can see here, like very clearly, you're searching by license, CC by LGPL, right? So you can just, you, yeah, people, people in this community, there's 7,300 
pieces of music here. Discover it and use it, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, remixing is good. Remixing is great, by the way. If you haven't seen it, watch this amazing documentary called... Uh, what is it called? It's on my, it's on my YouTube. Uh, remix is everything, I just remembered. Remixing, remix, everything is a remix, yes. It's free to watch online. Um, they already have a two-part series. It talks about how in popular culture, in the real music industry, the real film industry, the real game industry, everything is a copy of everything else. There are constant legal battles over people ripping each other off. It's, on, it's another documentary, it's called uh, yeah. Copyright Criminals. Oh, okay. It's about the same. But the, the documentary here, it argues that um, without, without remixing, nothing, you would have nothing. You would have no science, you would have no music, you would have no popular culture. You know, it's actually, it's actually really like a fundamental part. And every time like, you suppress the liberty, you kind of introduce more copyright or even you know, fiercer you know, penalties, the innovation dies down. People start experimenting less, learning less. There's much less choice. You know, and I guess in the demo scene, but this has always been a topic. You know, it's always been it's an issue. It's weird how, how this concept of remixing, which should be uh, something that is absolutely okay to do, clashes with the concept of cultural appropriation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I find it sometimes struggling what is okay to reuse and in what form. When is it uh, okay to take somebody else's piece and mash it up with something else when is it something original or when is it uh, something just lamely copied and yeah the the same documentary maker made just this film ah. about culture ah, okay. business <laughs> you really need to watch this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway um yeah does that does that give us a good starting point so we have like uh until tomorrow to remix some cool shit together <laughs> and i'm looking forward to it so Thanks, Oleg, for the for the big introduction. Welcome. And I think we, we should we should take a break and team together and and find out what's next to to get started. I just love this photo of a chicken. I'll just leave you with that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. All right, and thank you for for being around. Yeah. So lunch. Uh, within, does anyone know what the weather is like right now? Look. Nice if I Who's quickest? The uh, app or me to dash to the door? Huh? 20 degrees? 20 degrees? Sunny? Mostly cloudy. Mostly cloudy, but not raining? Anyway, I think I, I think just getting some fresh air, having a little bit of a picnic mm -hmm. up on the Grosse Chance with a beautiful view of Bern and maybe the mountains if we're lucky. There's a, there's a cafeteria. Um, oh, the, die, Sachen, die Sachen können wir hier oh, lassen. Yes. We'll, we'll the, the guys from Erupt no. are watching and, and they're strong they're einfach strong guys and 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 the camera is watching so yeah <laughs> voila <laughs> this is being recorded and streamed <laughs> the internet will know the criminals <laughs> it would be like uh, i was in a pub in, in england two weeks ago uh, it is a dog a, a pub with uh, paintings of dogs you know every pub has its weird concept so this pub had Paintings of dogs. And they commissioned artists to make really beautiful, like Renaissance style paintings of dogs wearing human clothes. So it's always like a dog face and then clothes, right? And they had, they, they, they were completely unknown. This pub it was really not very popular. Was not doing very well until they had a thief. Someone came and stole a portrait of a dog, took off with it, and just disappeared. And uh, even though they had security camera footage, and they posted it on the internet. No one could identify this criminal. Clearly someone from out of town. No. The police, like, they couldn't really do anything. And so years went by. And then one day, a taxi arrived at the pub with a picture in the seat. Like an empty taxi with just a picture. Um, and a note saying, uh, I missed you guys very much. I had a great trip around the world. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and, and, the, and the cabbie wanted 30 pounds. Fair. So the cab was from, you know, quite a way. <laughs> and this made it into the daily news, and it was that everybody, like the pub, became super popular at that point. Marketing genius. That's yes. stage 100%. <laughs>
So anyway, if we have any uh, demo scene thieves, they will be on the internet shortly. <laughs> I have an idea, maybe I can code something tomorrow before it even starts. Uh, do you know a bit about Cables DR? Uh, no. uh, I just wanted uh, a quick hint about that idea I'd like to make. Um, because uh, I used to group, I grew up in the hip hop culture, I made the profession myself, so I was inspired by the tool uh, to make. Uh, in graffiti, there's something called a uh, uh, wall of fame, mm -hmm. where the best graffiti artists mm -hmm. use. And I thought of making a wall of frame, which uh, should be like an infinite wall to the left and the right, that's like, a, like an infinite tunnel, with the random stuff popping up. He thought he thought uh, it's free, of course, for the wall. And the idea is to make something generative that doesn't end. And, uh, I can mix them all uh, I think the concept is really uh, easy and I'm, I'm just thinking how I could make this work. I was thinking about choruses like uh, the turning and on the run kind of substituting the elements uh, of the torus to give the idea of an infinite tunnel or something like that. So I just brainstorm. Yeah, so you how do you program the concept of an infinite tunnel? you are inside like inside the forest and you go around like this and you replace all the stuff that you, yeah. you cannot see yeah. at the moment. Oh. It's, it's, it's like you have like one, two or three textures and they, and they repeat and then you, then you change one texture after another and then the blending. Or you, or you make like a, a very big texture and then you uh, the texture. Uh, I was thinking more like something in 3D. Like I imagine like in this remix uh, and something that, that passes by on the camera on the camera. And in front of the walls, I shape something like that. Mother gets replaced. This kind of, yeah, like a, this central reflection of the sun and the moon shining, like something like this. Okay, maybe look at the coffee. Yeah, 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 look at the coffee. Y